Video 4 – How to Use the Timeline Hello! In this tutorial we are going to explore the timeline. Timeline defines how to play the patterns created in the tracker. For this purpose we are going to create our first piece of music in Sunvox. Let's try something you might be more familiar with. We want to create a piece that has a melodic line and a fast ostinato accompaniment. The melody and the accompaniment have different lengths, so by using the timeline I can show you how to manage this scenario. Let's start a new project and choose some modules for our purposes. We will need three analog generators. One will be connected directly to the output, and this will be used for our ostinato accompaniment. From Effects, we choose a Reverb, and we connect it to the output. The two analog generators on the left need to be connected to the Reverb module. We are going to use these two analog generators, setting different parameters for each to play our melody. We want their sound to go through the reverb to get a richer and warmer result. Now we have to write a melody in the tracker. Let's select the analog generator that this pattern will refer to. From the menu we choose Pattern Properties. The melody's length is 6 bars of 4-4 four, four time, and it repeats as a loop. Since each tracker's line represents a sixteenth note, we need to create a pattern which will be 96 lines long. Also, we only need one track because, for the moment, we only want to control one analog generator. Once I unlock the tracker, I will write the melody you are seeing in the description. Try to keep up with me by using the arrows to enter the notes into the slot on the right. We wrote our melody and now we can look at the timeline, resizing it by moving this vertical bar. Now we can play our melody. While the melody is playing, I can tweak the corresponding analog generator to get different sounds. I could tweak the reverb as well.
Let's come back to the timeline, and as you can see, our pattern represented by this pixelated square, and which contains the melody we are listening to, is played as a loop. Double-clicking on an empty portion of the timeline will create an empty pattern. Move it below the pattern we created before, and be sure to position it right at the beginning of the timeline. You can help yourself by zooming in on the screen using two fingers. In this way, the content of the two patterns will stay synchronized. Let's unlock the tracker and select from the menu Pattern Properties. Our ostinato is made by a sequence of eight repeating sixteenth notes. So let's set our pattern accordingly. Now we will choose the analog generator that this pattern will refer to, the one that is not connected to the reverb, and I will write the ostinato you are seeing in the description. OK, if you look at the timeline, you will see that this pattern is much shorter than our melody, we have to clone it as many times as are necessary to fit the greater length of the melody. This means that 96 steps of our melody divided by 8 steps of the ostinato is equal to 12 repetitions. To do this, we first need to select the pattern that we want to clone, and then choose from the menu Clone. Now we have two identical patterns connected through a tiny green wire. This means that if I edit one of these patterns, the other pattern will also be affected. Let's repeat this process until we get the desired length. We can now listen to the ostinato and tweak the corresponding analog generator. Now we select the pattern containing the melody, and from the menu we choose Copy, and then Paste. We move this pattern right beside the one containing the melody. We did this because, once our melody has been played through, we would like it to be played again, but slightly differently, with a second voice added to it. We copied but did not clone the melodic pattern, because we don't want our new edits to affect the original pattern. From the uppermost menu, we choose Pattern Properties again and add a second track. We unlock the tracker and select the analog generator that we want to write for. Now I can write the second voice, which you can see in the description.
At this point, we can go back to the timeline and clone the ostinato pattern again to fit the length of our second melodic pattern. Now we can play the melody with its ostinato and tweak the parameters of the analog generator playing the second voice. As you see, thanks to the timeline, you can schedule the order in which your patterns are played back and arrange them in a meaningful way even if they have different lengths and characters.